Mason, randomly, what did you think about perpendicular lines? What do they need? What do they need to be? One line has to be positive and the other has to be negative. Very good. So you're saying if my regular line, and what do you mean by one's positive, one's negative? What are you talking about? What part of the line are you talking about? The y intercept? This regular of is. Well, you, you, you're right. What are you talking about, though? There's two components of a line it's the intercepts or the gradient. Are you talking about the gradient or the intercepts? The intercepts. You sure? What do you think he's talking about, Mitch? You'd be correct. It's talking about the gradient. So the gradient of one. So if your original function, Jerry, has a positive gradient, what would you expect about your negative? Sorry, what would you expect about your perpendicular line? If your original line has a positive gradient, what would you expect to see with your perpendicular line? Very good. And vice versa, if it was negative, you expect your perpendicular to have a positive gradient. Very good. That's halfway there. We're halfway there. We've identified the sign. I want you now to think about what happens as our original line gets steeper. So as our original line goes, so, so we've got x equals 1, that's going to be our perpendicular line, versus something like that, which is like x equals 3 or 4. Is the gradient of my perpendicular line steeper or less steep here? Interesting. What about if I swap those around and I had that with my original function? My normal function would be? Is that steeper or less steep? All right. So there seems to be a relationship between the steepness of the original function and the steepness of our perpendicular line. What do you think that is, Harry? An inverse. What do you mean by inverse? Very good. And when we talk about inverse relationships, that means we have one on gradient. Okay. So the gradient of our perpendicular function is one on the gradient of our regular function. What have I forgotten? Mason, can you th think of anything I've forgotten? If my gradient's two, my other gradient would be 1 on 2, is that correct? What have I missed? That's the equation. So if I've got a line, give me a line. Ethan, give me a line. Y equals any number. 6, X plus 3, right? I want you now to have a go. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to have a go at finding the perpendicular function. Y equals... And 6x minus 3. No, plus, minus doesn't matter. The C intercept doesn't matter. The C value doesn't matter. So I can make... We'll put this as a minus 3. So all you need to do is identify the gradient. Ten seconds. I haven't taught you this, so there's no problem in getting it wrong. Mitchy, I can see you're deep in thought. What are you thinking? What do you reckon the gradient should be? Okay, what's the original gradient? Six. So if I put six into this equation, correct? The gradient of my perpendicular line will equal negative 1 on. So wouldn't that be negative 1x on 6? Who got that? Anyone? It's good. Very impressive. Would I write that as 1x on 6 or not? How would I write that? Negative x on 6. Happy with that? Alright, I'm going to give you a couple to practice with. I want you to write down the perpendicular lines to y equals okay to give me a number six not six seven x minus one does the c value matter 
And that's so find the line for that and then give me another one, Mason. Y equals. Don't say seven or six. Three. X plus one. No, plus one will do, yep. Off you go. Find me the perpendicular lines for those. <laughs> the equation's always.